Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you're welcome to our third session of Each One Teach One. Uh, I am Dumba Steven uh, from the ICT Teachers Association of, of Uganda. And in today's topic, uh, we want to understand what these projects are. When we are in our groups as teachers, uh, we find that many people are asking about projects, projects this, projects that, projects this. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, people are asking questions about projects. I, for one, I also have my many questions about projects. Uh, we are privileged today to have Mr. Mr. Andrew and Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers is also uh, uh, one of those experts when it comes to the new curriculum. So I'm glad that he's here. And I want to give this opportunity to Rogers to please welcome Andrew to help us and take us through today's session. Rogers, over to you. Yes, thank you very much, um, Mr. Dumba and uh, the entire team at the IC Teachers Association of Uganda. And um, for this program of Each One Teach One, we have a lot of colleagues who are having the knowledge and resources. And we have those who are new, maybe they are not very equipped. And through this initiative, uh, we, at least members can come freely and we share. Projects are supposed to be, uh, in a new curriculum, projects are part of what we call summative assessment. After you have taught learners, uh, topics at the end of the day, instead of just giving them exams to test their knowledge, uh, giving them a practical uh, problem solving project uh, is a good deal. So um, many teachers are normally asking, like Mr. Number says, and today we are very privileged to have our colleague who is going to share with us. So um, I will not speak much uh, because we have a real speaker on board. Let us um, welcome him and um, be able to share um, uh, actively. So thank you very much, um, Mr. Dumba, for the preparations. And let us have Mr. Andrew Chibuka. Over to you, Mr. Andrew. OK, good evening, colleagues. Yes, good evening, Andrew. Yes, I'm privileged to be uh, here online to share about projects I'm not I'm not not as an expert but as this is teach one uh, each one teach one I'm going to share a brief of what we have then we shall discuss our projects a bit lengthy uh, I want to share one part then uh, my colleague I work with at Forest Hill Hilda Nakaziba, Nakaziba will come and share the assessment uh, because projects have uh, the, the lifespan is quite lengthy. So uh, there, there's a, a bit of uh, more detail. Now, there's a lot of uh, theory about projects, which I will avoid so much, and uh, uh, will be brief more so in the practical area or to speak in the simple terms that we can internalize and actualize and uh, and make this uh, discussion very productive because if i go into the much theory we may not finish and now <clears throat> a project uh, what is a project we can call them assignments given to learners to be done over a period of time. Uh, am I very clear? Yes. yes sir. Am I clear? Yes, yes, yes you are clear, sir. Thank you. Uh, projects, uh, assignments given to learners to be done over a period of time. They are done either individually or in groups, depending on the nature of the project. Uh, learners are expected to come up with a tangible product. So a project is, a, is an assignment and it is expected to be done in a period of time. You can't uh, call something a project that is done in one day. No, no, no. 
if you have a database problem and uh, you say tell learners you give a whole big database number and the learner can sit with within one day and solve it that is not a project that is a simple assignment it is an exam it is what and then also uh, another important feature of a project is that uh, it must at the end of the day a learner must produce a tangible product something that can be seen touched can be heard or felt that is a tangible product and now uh, we can uh, go to uh, these assignments they are aimed at they are aimed at the main uh, the main the, the important aim of projects is for learners to be able to identify society problems and then come up with the solutions of the above problems uh, today uh, wealth is attached to problems our ability to identify problems then come up with solutions to, to such problems then we'll say we are able to earn a living or become wealthy now we want to uh, these projects uh, are aimed at bringing out uh, the important skills uh, from these learners how the skills that we always emphasize communication skills like uh, teamwork skills like creativity uh, teams skills like hard work uh, project uh, project uh, project is aimed at bringing out all these skills in a learner because we've said that this project can be done by an individual or in a group we emphasize group projects because uh, here a learner is able to communicate they're able to synergize their skills, bring them together. One person suggests one thing, they build on it. And when they work together to come up with something tangible that can add value to set all sort of a society problem, then we say we are successful. Now, this entire idea of a project, uh, we can say a project has a several parts several aspects uh <clears throat> i've drawn a table here uh identifying one two three four five six seven seven parts of a project let me first list them and then we will go one by one to look into the several parts and then see how each can work now every yeah. project Excuse me, Mr. Andrew. Yes, sir. Um, I hope, I think you shared the slideshow, but you are scrolling through the slides, which are not the slideshow. So we are still on the, on the paper slide. Hey. Sorry, let me, let me stop my share here. Yes, Mr. Mr. Andrew. No, not yet. You can now share your, your slides, sir. Oh, I can share my slide. Okay. Yes, sir. Let me let me try to. Wow, 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 wow. Huh. Wow, wow, wow. Sorry, I've never shared this right here. It may, it may take me time. It may take me time. Is it okay if the, these are summaries? Is it, is it okay if I just speak them out? Yes. I think we can try to have them. You, there's a, a share button. A green one. A green one. Yes, at the bottom of your screen. Uh -huh. Then you can share in their screen. In the first frame. Let me try out. Let me try out. Let me try out. Let's see. You're on the phone or, or computer? I'm on the phone, not computer. 
Hey. <laughs> there are some buttons. The, the button is white, actually. Where there is reactions, then there is share, then the record. The next one after reactions. Yeah, have share here. Then screen. Okay. Sorry, sorry. In fact, these are not slides I per se. Okay. I, it's, okay. I then, didn't prepare slides, please. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, then you can maybe just turn on your camera if you're in a good place so that you see your video. If not, you can continue. Let me just continue slowly. Okay. Uh, now. Hello. Somebody should un should mute. Uh, I'm saying the first part in the, this project life cycle is to uh, to identify a problem because projects are aimed at solving problems, real existing problems. Uh, I'm going to share in, in view or in line with ICT because. Most of us here are ICT teachers. I may speak of other subjects, but uh, I will basically be in a line of ICT. Uh, somebody please unmute. Sorry, mute, not unmute. Somebody mute. Uh, a problem. <clears throat> uh, there are many problems. When we look around, there are many problems. Uh, viruses, uh, look at the environmental issues, you look at the, uh, when we come to ICT, care and safety, you look at the uh, devices being spoiled. Uh, these are problems. Uh, we, we had a problem in our lab, we use a lot of CDs. So we find a lot of CDs scattered, scattered many places and not kept well. So these are different, different problems. ICTs can also be used to solve environmental problems, uh, sanitation in schools or in environments, water pollution. So these are different problems. So each project is aimed at <clears throat> solving a problem. So we must identify a problem and clearly define it because each project, uh, project success depends on uh, the problem identified. Then number two, we look at a project title. What is a project title? Uh, for example, you have done something, but how, uh, what have you, you define, you define what you intend to make, or if you have a final product, ask you, uh-huh, what is the title of that? This whole theme, what is your entire project all about? Uh, is a title. Uh, then in this new curriculum, each project must be linked with a topic, a covered topic in a class. Uh, we have done several topics, senior series have covered the introduction, they have covered uh, ICT, care and safety, they have covered the word processing one, they have covered the uh, spreadsheets one, they have covered many. Uh, these, pro these several topics. So when we are identifying a product, project, we must link it to a, tight, a, a, a topic covered in a class uh, that I'm going to do such and such a project. And then, and uh, this is the linked, uh, this is the link topic that we have done. Then, uh, we must also properly specify the resources we are going to use. If you are looking at environmental, uh, the problem was environmental uh, pollution. And the, <clears throat> uh, our project title is maybe we are designing, uh, we are designing uh, maybe a dustbin. We are designing a dustbin 
uh, to designing a dustbin to solve environmental pollution. Uh, what is our linked topic? Is there, do we do have anything like environment in ICT? You state it. Then the resources we are going to use, maybe we are going to use uh, water bottles, we are going to use glue, we are going to, you list the resources that you are, clearly these resources must be specified. Then the methodology, how are you going to do to make that dusty bin? How are you going to put together that is a methodology. Then from methodology, uh, you clearly also define the final product. Each project must have what we call a final product. Problem, environmental pollution. Product, dusty bin. Huh? Uh, problem, I see, uh, okay. Uh, problem, uh, uh, breakage or breakage or uh, uh, waste of uh, breakage or poor storage of ICT devices. Uh -huh. That is the, uh -huh. that is our problem identified. Uh, then final product, uh, maybe a CD holder, maybe uh, yeah, a CD holder or CD jackets. That is the final product. It must be clear. And then uh, it should be also tangible. You make something. If you're making a CD holder, let it be tangible. If you're making, a, uh, we've had our students make curtains, curtains from CDs. They are solving a, a problem of uh, poor uh, storage of ICT devices and uh, because of sunlight coming into the lab so they are they go to resources which is which which are the waste cities or use the cities and then they are making curtains so the final product is clear that curtains now from final product you also state properly the time the time your project is going to take how much time we said that a project cannot last for a term. Okay, it can last a time, but uh, best, uh, best time should be at least a month. Project should not be a day, one day or two days, eh? but at least one month or at most a term. So you clearly state the time span, the lifespan, the, uh, the lifespan of that project. Then you also look at the cost. You state the budget. You state the budget, how much money, if you are going to make uh, curtains, if you are going to make a uh, woolen carpet, you want to solve the problem of uh, machines falling down on the floor, the mice, keyboards falling down on the floor, they get broken, and uh, you want to make a curtain, a, a, a carpet. Uh -huh. What do you need? What are the resources? that you need to. So these things should be properly stated before any work can go on. Now, uh, as these learners are making this, uh, we should be reminded that all this is a work of, this is a child's work. Our part as teachers is to explain to the learners what we expect. For example, what I'm just sharing, you clearly tell them the several parts of the project. For example, the problem identification, the project title, the topic linked, resources or methodology, resources and methodology, the final product, the time, the cost. When the learners understand this, then the learners are the ones supposed to identify these problems. It is not the work of a teacher, again, to say, no, we have several problems here. Don't you see scattered CDs? Don't you see? No, 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 no. That is the work of a learner. The work of a teacher, I'm going to state it here. A teacher has his work and uh, uh, the work of a learner. What is the role of a teacher? Let me first come here. The teacher's work is to make observations. What are the learners doing? After the teacher, the learners identify the problem and then the title. And then the topics they bring to the teacher. The teacher will 
uh, correct will help the learners through the lifespan of this project. If it is one month, then at least you interact with these learners. It's twice a week. Uh, they bring to you uh, is when they say we have a problem of environmental pollution. Is it a problem? You heard of them. Uh, what is the title? Is it a genuine? Is it a valid title? Basing on what they want to do. We, really, they are saying we are we want to to make CD covers. Which topic is that uh, in the in the syllabus? Have you covered that topic? Eh? That is our work to guide and correct, not to suggest, not to tell learners what to do, but to correct them in the process of as they build this. They may uh, speak of. Uh, uh, they may state ambiguous costs, very big costs, yet we say that in projects, let's make sure we use available resources. Because if ICT has projects, biology has projects, these 13 or 11 subjects have projects, and uh, everyone, uh, everyone is asking for money and too much money, you'll scare parents. Yet we can identify resources within our our reach there's also another approach to projects where learners are exposed to available resources uh, before they identify a problem uh, when they're exposed to available resources like in our case when we have a lot of cds use the cds when they see such resources they can identify a problem that this CDs can solve. Uh, they, can, they can, it's like backtracking. You have seen the resources, then you can think of a problem they can solve, then a product which you can construct from these resources, and then you solve a problem. When you have a lot of waste material like bottles, uh, bottles, when learners are expo uh, see this, they can also think of something. Bottles are, are themselves a problem. For example, they pollute the environment. But again, they are a, an important resource in making many things. I've seen uh, children make uh, good, good, durable dust beans out of these bottles. Uh, so they have been exposed to a resource. Then uh, they are identifying a problem that these bottles can sort of then they go ahead to make uh, a final product and then make a report uh, there's something i didn't mention about the life the life cycle the last thing of a project is a project report project report we shall talk i'll uh, talk about that later now i was still talking about the roles of a teacher in this whole process a teacher will, will uh, make observations, see what students are doing, advise. Then also hold conversations with them. Uh, formative, this is formative assessment. Tell them, ah, but uh, you can make this better. You look at what they are building. Are they working as a team? What is the contribution of each person? Uh, is what they are doing in line with the theme, with the topic? are based on track of what they're doing. Also, the teacher provides guidance and support the learners. You guide them because we are looking at creativity. Uh, I was in class and uh, students brought a project and uh, what they call the final product. And what they brought was a, they got a stick and they tied a broom there. And they told me, uh, this is our final product and uh, we are solving an issue of uh, what dust, over what? Uh, I almost caned them. Because how, how much time does it take to get a, a in fact, it was a, a stick from a, a brush that got broken. The brush got broken, so they got the stick, I tied a broom, and they were handing in that this was their final product. There was no creativity. 
that thing can be done not even a day but in one so in that interaction i had to to tell them to repeat everything to think of something new a new problem uh project title they had to do everything then also the teacher will keep records these records uh, will involve many things. They will involve marks after marking. They will involve uh, keeping, uh, we can take pic pictures of these final products. In subjects where, like chemistry, where they are making solutions, which solutions cannot last long. Or even in ICT, they are making delicate, because these are prototypes, they are making delicate things. We can take pictures and then keep them. Because at the end of the day, we may be asked to produce evidence. Uh -huh. You are handing in the marks, project marks, to the DOS or the administration. They'll ask you for evidence that actually uh, work was done. And it's because it's only you who saw the final product, you must keep a record. Yet, uh, for example, if 100 learners, 100 groups are handing in, you're not going to keep all this bulk. You don't have that space. We take pictures and then store, either on phone or on computer. So these are the records and then the marks. Then also, a uh, teacher will receive the final product and reports. Uh, this is continuous through the project life cycle. Now, those are the, that's the work of a teacher. You are not, a teacher will not, uh, okay, there are suggestions that will induce the learner to think. I have got my learners and I've gotten some YouTube videos to show them such that their thinking is stimulated. Uh, you are helping them get into this world of creativity. Uh, they have seen how CDs can be used to generate solar. They have seen how uh, old jerry cans can be used to, 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 to to, to, to make motors, to make many things. I'm trying to stimulate them, but I'm not suggesting that they do the very thing they have seen on YouTube. So my work is to encourage creativity, but not to make work for, for learners. And now, uh -huh, that is the project uh, lifespan. And now each project must exhibit a degree of innovation and creativity in addressing society problems. Yes, you are making uh, a, a blower, a blower. These are prototypes. These are prototypes. They are not very finished products. They are not, but we are cultivating. We, we want that idea from a student that creation and innovation from this learner. He has seen a blower working, but he's saying, yes, I may not make the machine made blower, but uh, I can get a motor and the, some plastics, then we make a blower, a vacuum cleaner. Now, uh, as you look at these products in the process, is there innovation and the creativity? Are these projects, are these things addressing the society problems? Let me go back about prototypes. One student, one group of our senior threes, we are making a, a wooden carpet. Uh, they, want to, they wanted to, to solve the problem of uh, breakage of ICT devices like mice and keyboard. When we were in the lab, you are teaching, you hear a mouse falling down. And the, today's mice, of uh, today electronics, once it falls down, it is gone. So we are saying a student, uh, they are coming up with an idea of making a wooden carpet. But they're not going to make a full wooden carpet for the lab. They don't have those resources. But they are making something like, the, like a one meter squared uh, like uh, one meter a square meter and they, they are using local available resources like threads like sacks like uh, uh, all these sweaters and then they come up with such an idea you look at creativity and uh, you see you you are also seeing that if if 
this child is provided with enough resources, then I can make something, something better. Now, uh, a report as uh, a report after this final product has been made, a report must be produced. A report. In fact, uh, when a student is handing in the final work, he hands in two things. When he hands in the final product, there should be a report that has to follow. And this report determines whether the final product should be accepted or not. Because uh, this report uh, entails the following. A report should have a title, the title of a project. What, is, what are you actually doing? Uh, once a, a student presents uh, a final product, say mm, a dustbin, say mm, a blower, say a, a system, uh, it, it may be a system, uh, an electronic system. Uh, one student, were, one group of us was making uh, a system that can be used at the canteen. They cited a problem that when they go to canteens, those canteen people take long to give them uh, their back change. So they sat down using spreadsheet, designed a simple system. Uh, this system uh, entailed all, most of the products they usually buy from the canteens. Uh, uh, once it is installed on a machine, like how this, uh, how do we call this? The barcode, barcode readers are doing attached to machines are doing in, in, in store in in in, uh, in shops. So enters uh, whatever he has bought, then the uh, then the money, then the balance, such that uh, we reduce on the time. They reduce on the time they, they spend on canteens. Now, when such a system is presented to you. It is the report that qualifies it because the report must have a title. It must properly uh, show the aims of a project. Aims, what I, why, why are you making this project? Why have you, why are you making, why have you made this project? That's, those are the aims. Then the introduction. Uh, this brief introduction will cite the problems will cite uh, how you intended to, how you have solved this problem. That is a brief introduction. Then it will also, uh, it must also have the resources, what is needed. Huh? Yes, you want to make this system to help, to reduce the time spent on canteens, to get balance, uh, change and what. But now what do you need? Those are the resources. You should clearly state that. Then the methodology, how have you done the thing? How have you actually done what you are presenting? Then also, what challenges, the challenges you have faced, what challenges have you faced in making this tool, in designing this solution, in making what you have made? Then you also give recommendations you give recommendations uh then you how do you conclude how do you conclude now uh as i continue i'm going to ask my colleague hilda she's going to take us through uh take us through the assessment process because as this project is made, we must assess as teachers. We must assess because at the end of the day, they are going to ask us max. The group has done its work and the, they are handing in. So you must assess. So I'm requesting, I'm going to request my colleague to take us through that. Uh, but before she comes, uh, uh, I want to recall on a few points, uh, the issue of creativity. Hmm? You may, uh, two groups may do the same 
may do the same product huh? but still still this product cannot be exactly the same except it was copy and paste there should be that uniqueness we may both produce a cd cd holders we may uh, two teams may produce uh, uh, a system solving a particular problem but it, these two systems cannot be exact exact except it was copying and pasting uh, also this project should be efficient hmm? efficiency is measured by the outputs this product really 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 yes it is a prototype you have made a dustbin you have made a carpet you have made a blower does it actually blow dust this carpet yes you have made it when a, 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 an object falls on it a peripheral falls on it can't it get broken hmm? it must that is the efficiency then it must also meet uh, or exceed the planned targets hmm? does it meet the targets you have said you want to to eliminate dust in the lab you have said you want to eliminate viruses okay if you are making an antivirus you have said you does your project do what you intended it to do now uh let me first pause and uh, welcome my colleague to take us through the assessment then we will open discussions hilda are you online yes please i'm around okay take us through uh good evening everyone yes good evening hilda yeah am i clear enough yes you are yes Yes. Okay, I, I had earlier shared a document that we are going to be following to help us through how to mark project work because a series of sessions have been held. I believe we have benchmarked from various schools on how to do this, but we tried as Forest Hill and we have tried at least on 100%, we are somewhere around 70%. However, to top up on our, my colleague's presentation, I would like to emphasize that the fact that these projects are done by our students, the teacher's role is basically to sit back and observe. Observe because if you observe, you're going to make the whole marking process easier for you. If you do not observe, you're going to face challenges. We shall see them in our marking guide because they'll be asking crucial questions. Maybe how did the student do this? So if you did not know how the student managed to approach to that stage, it's going to be hard for you to go to the next stage before marking the previous one. So the previous stage is more viable to the marking of the next phase in this chapter. Uh, I believe, yes, thank you so much. Now, as we are looking onto our screen, we are seeing the first page. However, we are going to ignore that and we head onto the second page. We are going to use the second page and the, and the third one. Reason, the first one is like a summation of everything. Down there, we see indicators, aspect to be examined, all those are summatives. But when we look at page two, page two is actually breaking down what a learner should do step by step each phase we have from phase one to phase 11 sorry phase one we have phase two phase three all those things and they are basically showing what the learner is supposed to do i emphasize teachers you are supposed to be at the sideline if you give these students what to do you're limiting their creativity you're limiting their innovativeness you're limiting their critical thinking and yet at the end of the day we want to send out our learners into the world when they understand or they can actually solve problems in the society so when we look at our aspects to be marked we have aspects to be marked and marks allocated and we go to the first thing did the learner write an appropriate project title for the problem so before we start anything and you're introducing projects to our learners, 
you're bringing them into this new world, you are, you're only allowed to ask them questions and they provide answers. For example, you can tell them, what are the problems that we are having in our school? Okay. What solution do you think can be taken upon this? What product do you think can be maintained or gotten from to, to see that we achieve that problem solving in our school? And I highly encourage that our learners do things that the eyes could see. We cannot send our learners into the towns because they are not coming from the same areas. We have a very, very big diversity when it comes to school. So the only community that is having that togetherness to them or that likeness is the school. So to make it, to break it down for them, you can tell them, let, maybe let's look around our school. If that is way harder and they have failed, which is impossible, <laughs> you can tell them, let's look around our what? Computer lab. Like to break down things for them to easily understand the aspect of what a project is at the end of the day. Um, I have not been able to share a table, but there is a table that we used to see before we even continue to the marking session to just assess, have the learners understood what a project is? Do they understand what a problem is? Have they gotten the problem? And they are basically one, seven, seven columns, one having the topic, sorry, the problem, the learner states for you that this is a problem we have identified. The column two should have the topic related. Like if a learner is identifying, we have dust in the lab, where in the chapters that we have covered is dust bones, anything connected to dust, where can I find it? Maybe in this chapter, maintenance of the computer lab under that subtopic. Then the title solution, because I can have a problem, but I struggle to find a solution. Now, uh, most of our learners have problems with that column and we should always mark it because the learner could see the problem, but they don't know what they can name the solution. So your role as a teacher is to guide them and see that they come up with something that is student friendly, but at some moment when they take it out into the world, it's making sense to others. So we can decide to put their title solution and then they can identify a product in the next column. Then in the next column, they identify for us the resources that they are to use to make sure that their product is accomplished because they can do this survey in about 30 minutes. They move around the school, then they get to know. It's just a 30 minutes walk out of a lesson. Until they move around the school, find a problem, find a solution, identify any product you can make, give me the resources you can make, give me the expenditure that you might be able to use. Remember they are kids so they can get excited. But our role is to guide. And how is our guiding? My, uh, the co-current speaker mentioned usability of our available resources in the environment. We should always make sure that our students first focus on the things that they reach first, on the things that they can see other than things that they are supposed to go by. Because at the end of it, or where the world is going, we need creative thinkers. And if we have observed very well, Nowadays, recyclable products are moving faster than manufactured products. You can make dustbins, you can make designs of bottles, vessels, anything from recycling the products that we use on a daily. So that encouragement should be there. If maybe there are chances that our kids, someone can do a project and they need, uh, they need to buy a motor or purchase dry cells, that is okay. But have you evaluated for them? If they bring for you their resources, are you showing them that we have this alternative? We talked about showing them YouTube videos, other people, what they have done, because they are not the first people to make the product, no, but they are people that have done them. So what we do is that kind of, that little bit of research, that exposure to what others have done and they're eager to learn, all helps them in our research, the formative part, because the summative also comes in at a later stage. 
So when we go to the, the learner write an appropriate project title, that comes down to after the learner stipulating a, a problem, did they manage to come up with a title? Yes, we have dust in the lab. What is your project title? The title maybe should come from an instance of making a motor blower so as to eliminate dust from the computer lab. I'm using examples of what our students have done. And then was the learner able to align any, align to any seam in the subject? This is why I said the other table is very relevant in this situation, because if you had drawn that table and you were able to evaluate stage by step that this group managed to cover this and this, you just go on thinking that they have this, they have this. You just go on giving two, two, two to everyone. Did they learn the right objectives and benefits of their product? This comes down to the report at the end of it all, because in our report, we are supposed to have that brief aim of the product, aims and objectives of the product, what the product is going to do for the community in our background, all that. And you give their marks. Did the learner state an appropriate tangible product? I think from number one up to number 10, we can see that our table sums it up. It's like a marking guide, a summative table. You're summing everything up in one table and all you have to do is just go on giving to to or tick tick to make your work easier. And then when we go to 12, let's slide down to 12. Was the learner's project work organized? This comes down to our project report. At the end of the learner exploiting, hustling to make the product, they are supposed to come back to you as a teacher with an item, a tangible item, followed with a report. However, our report should only be concentrated on what the teacher advised. Now, if you advised your learners wrong on a format, it's upon you. That's where we're going to find that uh, one school will have another format and another school will have another format. And you might find the teachers are confused in what to do. But the table that I'm sharing right now was provided by um, NCDC. So we can as well go with that at the moment because new curriculum, we take what we have and we share. Uh, the organization, how you teach, how you wanted them, how you told them to organize their work. That after the title page, I want the background, I want the objectives, I want the process of how you did this, I want the benefits, I want the problems, all those. It's on how you wanted your, their reports to be presented. That's on you as a teacher. Using all resources, did the learner utilize the resources properly? A kid who has used available resources and a kid who has purchased when their project could be, could have used available resources. The one who has been creative enough to use a rug as a pit or a bottle or a thread or a rope from the compound, we have leaves around us to compound. Kids that are, are doing projects with readily available materials. Actually, any kid who does a project that is cost friendly, zero cost friendly, should have those whole marks, the whole of it. However, there are those projects that require kids to purchase in. Uh, even when they try to narrow it down, they cannot get, but all the effort shows in what our students do. Now, when we are marking, we are marking the product. You as a teacher, you're marking the product, the process in the making of the product coming from the theme, the title, the ideology, because kids come with different ideas. One comes, Madam, we want to make a bean, but we want to also make a curtain. We want to also, like, they have various ideas running around their head. So from the point go, idea development, you as a teacher, you're marking. That's why it's better, new curriculum is nice when they do it in groups, other than one person presenting. So if a US school that has large numbers, majorly focus on kids doing this in group work, in a group, a bunch, because when people are many, creativity increases. There is that competition that wants our group to be first. But if one person is alone, it is, it is restricting the creativity. They're just mining on getting the marks. But remember our curriculum is basing on creativity innovativeness, developing creative thinkers, taking to our world. So that's what we focus on. 
as we are doing these projects? Was the learner able to plan and carry out investigations? Now, if you've been following these learners step by step, obviously you're going to get used that now these people belong to this project. Even if you don't know their name, you just end up knowing this one is in this group and they are doing this. This one is in this group and they are doing this. So that, that approach to the kids uh, that you're giving them, that one-on-one -on -one rapport, they are able to approach you, ask you things, tell you, Madam, we are missing this, what should we do? Madam, we want to see this. Madam, you get that, that rapport that you have with the students. Was the learner able to sort and analyze information? All that, we look down to it, comes to us being there, being present when the learners are doing their projects. Uh, predict outcomes and reason decisions, evaluate solutions, use imaginations. This comes down to sketching, maybe in the report, when you're marking the report, the part where they need you to, under the procedure or process of making the product, I would prefer, or it would be better for learners to include images, sketches, because we don't just develop the product from our heads and just put it there, no. We could have started with a oval shape and then at the end of the product, we have a square shape. So the teacher will be like, how did we go to the square shape? Then they explain to you, but if they had that pictorial flow from one image, madam, we had this first, we were thinking about circles, but then we saw that they are not sustainable. Maybe if we make it like a rectangle, that kind of creativity, idea development, imagination, exploration that they have, the yearning to have those different designs in their work, the competition or is for us to mark and pay attention to. Was the learner able to listen to you attentively? That's item 24, to pay attention to that because in a group, there is that one person who will be a dormant person when they are presenting, but is a very active person when they are when they are doing what when they are doing hands work. Yeah? That kind of difference in the students because one group cannot have one type of student, A student. No, a group could have A, B, C students, but you see that this one is nice in presentation. This one is not so nice in presentation, this one can do hands-on work, this one is a spokesperson, this one is a researcher in that different group. So all that missing and being present helps you to easily mark these students so that they attain their marks fully and uh, honestly. Then work effectively, diverse teams, that work, mark teamwork, interactive, effective with learners, that is teacher and student. Have they been coming to you? If they have not, properly give them a zoom. Because they have not been coming to you, you don't know where they have been getting these ideas from, you don't, you have not supervised their work in general. You give them a zero, they'll be getting other marks. Ability for own learning, this comes when they are doing their own research, they move around, go to different teachers, go to the library, go use Google, internet, everything, and they are doing it on their own. And trust me, if they are using Google, you're going to see Google related products. Like you see that this work is different from a learner who has just focused on themselves around school. A learner who has searched on the internet and has seen what people do out there or what people have done on the same product is not going to be the same learner who has just had an idea of let me make a bin, collectible, the cardboard papers produced their work is going to be different. So you have to be critical when you're marking that because we are going to have scenarios when we have more than two groups doing the same project. Though I, I refrain from that at least two, but not above two because copying can come, but it's okay. You know, you don't disdain them from doing a product as long as they have the problem and their solution and the product to meet. Your job is there to guide. Do not dictate anything for them. Uh, when we look at uh, work independently without with persistence, in instances where you tell them, go and research, go and do this, go to the compound and look for this, and they go, you give them their marks, interpret and interrogate mathematical data, measurements accurately. These things come down to the final product because you cannot present to me a final product 
ungataina measurement that does not make sense yes it makes sense to the eyes but theoretically it does not because um you might find when the kids have done a very nice sustainable product and on their next vision day a parent comes and they're like we want to sponsor that kind of project but to sponsor the project they are supposed to blow up because if they take it to an industry level they take measurements so the learner try to maybe scale up even if they did simple simple math on the diagram that the circumference was this the length was that you give them if they did not do not give them those marks because they did not attain it and you tell them the reason as to why they did not because these projects are done i think family decide we do it them family so if you correct them this time in the next lesson or in the next project they are going to be able to make these changes and they will produce much more better work uh patriotism respect human rights we are on 43 down there respecting human rights was no one harmed because human rights come from afar we have emotions we have feelings you know nowadays we are advocating for mental health you do not oppress anyone in the process if you did what did you do about it all that interactions they come back to you as a teacher where are you are present where are you present for them to come and discuss and trust me they are going to hate you some of them might hate you in the process and be like we hate madam she's pushing us back every time we go but you tell them it's for your own benefit and at the end of the day they're going to produce a better product than the one they came with at first yeah and uh, the total there we have 55 max that has been like that detail per detail detail per detail they are 55 max then when we go to aspect originality uh as aspect examine that's phase three and phase four where we have product and uh, the report marking this is marked wholly like you can look at a project you analyze what we did in page two and then you give a marks according to you as a teacher because here it's all about impression now they're not giving marks free of charge but because this page should somehow be in relation with it when at some point in creativity you gave them a zero or at some point you gave them something else so when you look at 45 and we have originally this focuses on how the student came up with the idea how was the idea manifested yes there are those things uh, all ideas that generate and they are uniform that's been but how is your dust being different from the other person's dust being? Now we are marking. If you got the uh, idea from your from Google, as you say, yes, it's okay. How is it different from your product? Now the difference is going to come in. One is going to use recyclable product. Another one will use paper. Another one will use tins. I think you see the deviations in this map. When we go to creativity still how different is your work interesting you know there is that kind of creativity that one portrays in their work for example we had a group at school that was doing a motor run and the sorry a dust blower and their idea was uh, to use a bottle of water a mineral water bottle these rendering bottles the small ones at first and then they just introduced the motor and blew with their lips and it ran we were like okay it's a new idea and everyone was like wow but we're like how are you going to do it so that you're not going to be the one to blow how can you do that then they started thinking we can buy dry cells we mix them here and there now when they're doing that process even other subjects are included because we are in computer but you're seeing a kid is doing in physics they're bringing in what that kind of creativity who would think that you can make a dust blower from not a bottle of water a mineral bottle so that kind of creativity innovativeness see when you look at that project it's not the daily project that we see no it's not then you give them their marks if they acquired them accurately if the learners product process high precision in solving the problem he or she identified when they are collecting these products or when in the process of making this product, you should always encourage them to test their products. How? 
if they are making a dust blower in their presentation to the class, they show how it will work. Is it working? Because they will tell us they are making a dust blower, but when we start to test the product, it's not working. So how effective and how accurate is our product? Is it working? Is it solving the problem? Yes, if I make the carpet, when the dust is there, does it come up? If it comes up, how can I work upon that so the dust does not come, but I keep my rug? And we have to make sure we, are, we take caution. We are not marking extreme projects, no. We are marking minimal projects. A kid can produce a, a, a square foot or one meter work. A kid can present half a meter work because we are marking prototypes. However, if students are able to go on with their product and they are able to make the final big product, it's also well. But in cases where we don't have enough time, because when you look at them, some of these products require a lot of time for precision, network, processing, and our schools are not giving us that enough time. So we instead change it or reverse it so that we mark prototype. However, the prototype should be as perfect as the final product because the only difference is the prototype is a smaller section and the main product is the blown up prototype. So whatever we see in the prototype, should be present in terms or at a time when we want to make the final product. This is like a miniature image of what is to be for our scene. When we look at uh, if all the content is written in the reports, connected, correct, suitable for solving the problem, we go back objectives. Does our report, do our reports have objectives? Did they achieve the objectives? Because it's from the objectives that you're seeing the product and you're evaluating. Uh -huh. Did the objective do this? To do this, is the project doing it? To do this, is the project achieving that? If the report's content conforms to the fact and real truth known to the solution, a student can come up with a different story or a, a problem that's not even existent in the community that you ask them to research about. You don't allow that you go back and guide them that we look into our society or our community. The all, all content presented in a report connected smoothly, logically, in choice of words and in a way that gives meaning to solving the student's problem. We go back to the grammar. How are our students stipulating their sentences? How are they putting their sentences together, punctuating all that in a report? This takes time. It takes time and it takes one's involvement, full on involvement. However, you make that very easy if you've been around these kids. We should not neglect the learners and tell them, okay, after two weeks, bring the project to me. No, we should be present in all these times as much as we can. You see that when you come to market, your job is made very easy very easy for you to mark you're even able to know some project of head in that process and this marking process is made very easy uh when we look through 55 56 they are explaining the different stages when we look at 56 if what is written in the following five six components in production product making procedure product testing in connect in the report connect to each other smoothly logically in choice of words and in a way that is clearly understandable these are learners they should not be using tough english when they are doing their reports they could go in those dictionaries and look for words you know we want them to explain to us how they understand it layman's language when we come to the part of resources used explain to me that i used this tool I used the knife. The knife was used to cut down or to shape or to trim off this and this and this. They even include the image of that knife and the resources used. They give the tool, explain what the tool was used for, or even I give a definition of what a tool is in that instance when it's needed, and also provide imagery 
proof. When they are explaining to us the procedures, we should take caution. Some of these learners just come up with a, with a thing overnight and they come and be like, okay, we have a project, let's go present to teacher, boom, they give you the project. No, in that procedure, they're supposed to show us, we had a sketch, we drew the sketch, that is stage one. After stage one, we collected materials. They take you pictures, collecting materials, images of the materials collected. After that, we clean instances where kids are collecting things from the rubbish pits. We clean the materials. They show you, they take pictures when they are washing. That kind of involvement. Now, when you see that process, there is no way you're going to tell me that you're not going to give these kids money. Because you're seeing that they did the work, they put in the effort. And we should not refrain from giving these students marks. We should not because it's their, it's their project. It's like a manufacturer coming and telling you, my product works like this and you, you'll be like, no, it does not work like that. And yet the other person is the one that created the product. So we should be cautious. Give those kids the marks where they need the marks. Give them Ptolemy a marks they are not ours to stay with, they are theirs. Give them the mark if they deserve them and encourage them. Because we, when at the end of projects and they present and then maybe a school suggests an exhibition, parents could come and want to sponsor a certain project. At that time, now it's coming to industrial manufacturing or industrial produce. You give them more effort, you know, encourage them to make the product better things like that and with that i believe if you need more i'll share the whole document in the chat you can go on next pages to understand in-depth marking but this was just a highlight of what we are supposed to do you can go through that pamphlet understand in depth what should i do here how do i mark here so that we, we this thing is off our head we can just keep on marking these kids and keep on guiding. I uh, thank you, Itao, for this chance. And I hope I've enlightened more on projects presentation and marking. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good night. Yeah, thank you so much, Hilda. Yeah, I've really picked a lot from you two people, Hilda and Andrew. Um, I think it's now time to welcome questions. Uh, Rogers. Mr. Rogers, are you there? Hello, everyone. Ah. Yes, Isaac, you have a question, please. Ms. Nguzi, Isaac, your hand is up. Please ask your question. Um. Mr. Domba. Uh, yes, Rogers. Yeah, thank you very much. I was not able to unmute. Um, maybe, I'm requesting uh, that you, you take over this session from here. Hey. Uh, they have questions. Uh, I, I, I request that you manage this part of the of the yeah. of the of this session. Okay, thank you. Um uh, first of all, I want to appreciate um the presenters for um, sharing really this document uh, took a lot of time to come up and really come up with um, the, the project and how it can be marked. So at this time, I think we should first get questions from some of the members and then we shall have um, uh, concluding remarks at once because I'm seeing the time is also moving. So within like 15 minutes, we should be able to wrap up. So let us have um, questions, uh, maximum five minutes, and then the last 10 minutes we should do, uh, wrap up. Um, so Mr. Mosinguzi, um, Mosinguzi, you can now unmute. You can try to unmute now. Yes. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, uh, Kibuka, Hilda, and uh, my brother, Mr. Steven. Each one teach one. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I just have one, one, um, one inquiry. Um, 
before that inquiry, I think I, I appreciate I appreciate the project uh, idea because uh, once you give chance to these kids, they can really give you magic. I had my uh, projects last term. But um, uh, one of the presenters, Madame Hilda, talked of um, limiting these learners to a school setting or a school environment. Mm -hmm. Don't you think if you limit these learners to a school environment, only a school environment, you are also limiting their creativity? I would suggest that we let them move out. What I did or what I, we do, or I, mm -hmm. I did at my school, you, you group them and let them go to the community and then find these uh, societal uh, problems. And then they come back, uh, share what they have found, and then they, they choose the one they can handle. So I think uh, for, we, we, could, we should not limit them to a school environment. Uh, that would also limit them to their creativity, exposure, mm -hmm. because what is the aim of this project is after they have uh, started, they are going to go out to the community and they are going to to solve societal problems. So I think uh, leave them move out. And then I, I want somebody to share with us here on mm. uh, what, what are some of our expectations in the, uh, maybe let's say in, uh, language language projects. If we're talking about uh, physical things, tangible things, what are some of the things that we should expect in the English or language, uh, language, uh, language, uh, um, um, our projects. I uh, thank you. Maybe others can 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 add on that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Let us hear from uh, Sergio Linia Steven. Okay, thank you. Good evening, colleagues. Good evening. Please repeat the point, please. Yes. Now, so personally, when I've been handling this project, I've done so far two, but on one topic, which is uh, computer hardware. I found myself limiting learners to only the topic of computer hardware, and I've been able to come up with different products, recorded videos, display boards, uh, well compiled notes in the form of a book, uh, form of soft copy notes, burnt on a CD, but all lined on one topic, computer hardware. Uh, and does this mean that I've been limiting or misleading my learners to do a uh, topic aligning for one topic? Oh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other person? Any other person? We have two more minutes of questions. Uh, meanwhile, um, our facilitators, uh, you should be Mr. Andrew and um, should be planning an answer to some of these questions. Um, let us get one more question. Uh, members, uh, you just unmute. The unmute function is enabled. Just unmute if you are unable to put up your hand so that you can speak now. Yes, go ahead. Okay, some members are just reflecting. Yeah, they don't have questions. Sometimes when you have been uh, uh, given it of information, I saw one of our colleagues in the chat uh, saying that some of those things favors well of schools. Uh, he's trying to console himself there. My friend, uh, don't have that attitude that's for well of schools. I think um, we can all do projects that we can afford within the resources that we have, whichever kind of level of school that we have. Let us hear from Omita Jadong. Jadong, go ahead and mute. Uh, Jadong, Omita, unmute, please. OK. Um, yes. Hello. Yeah, you know. Good evening, everybody. Yes, good evening. Hope I'm loud and clear. I just want to, to, to thank all the two have taught us. At least I've got something from all staff. And God bless you. Okay. So I'm going to ask um, our facilitators, uh, maybe. Before the facilitators come in, maybe the facilitators will give us 
Okay, facilitators, please go ahead and answer these questions and then I also give some small supplement and then I hand over to Mr. Dunga. We have like nine, nine minutes left. Uh, Mr. Andrew. Okay, thank you. Uh, first question of limiting learners to school environment. Yes, uh, we shouldn't limit them. Uh, only challenge is some, some schools are so closed that uh, they may not easily allow learners out, but what the colleague is doing of taking schools out of school, I think it is very okay. It's very okay. Uh, language projects, uh, I can't give more ideas, but I've seen my language teachers collecting menus from students. Uh, then uh, reports. Uh, reports are, oh, what's that? I've, I've, I've interacted, I've seen them collecting menus, well designed, and uh, I don't know what problem they're trying to solve. I can't give so much detail. But yeah. Then limiting learners to one topic, I think it is not okay. You are, we're not teaching one topic. And uh, uh, society problems are not limited in, are not limited. They are wide, wide, wide range. Of, and the, here, I think you are limiting yourself to computers now, computer lab. And the way you're making these playboards, what, what, uh, you're only helping academically. But in a, a real life, so I think uh, you open, or, uh, let's be open. Don't suggest, don't make this, uh, don't limit. Let them think through, find the problems, and then uh, they align it with the topics you have covered. I think uh, the world is not limited. We can't limit learners. I think let them be open to various various things. Uh, to the very sorry, okay. uh, Hilda, you have something to add? Hello, Hilda. Okay, let me come back to you, Rogers. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe I'm going to. Um, I'm seeing some members here in the chat also uh, bring in some questions. There is um, a member who is saying, how do you relate your project learning outcomes? Now, I want to also supplement something. Um, Mr. Dumba earlier noted, um, introduced me as one of the people who have been one of the master trainers of the curriculum. And um, this area of projects has been really abstract right from the first training that we had. Now I want to first uh, relate something here. Um, on, um, there is a, something on, Mr. Dumba, you'll allow me to, to connect to this. Yes, I have a, just a few minutes. There is a, the syllabus. For me, when I'm encouraging people to, to look for project ideas, I tell them, to go to the syllabus, okay? Uh, the syllabus, now this is ICT syllabus. I've also mm -hmm. syllabus and I've also an English syllabus because someone talked about English. So in the ICT syllabus, in the syllabus, you go to where there is planner. You look for what called program planner. So when you go there to the program planner, <coughs> program pl planner shows you um, is the topics that you have in your syllabus and the theme. And as you remember, uh, when Madame Hilda was explaining uh, the marking scheme, there's somewhere where that is relating to the theme. Um, so in projects, um, projects are not necessarily meant for assessing a single topic because we have what's called activity of integration. Activity of integration mainly assesses one topic. But the project allows you to assess across topics. And even, is that called subject integration? You can even have a project. Uh, a project doesn't not necessarily have to look at only ICT hardware or something. A project has cross-cutting skills whereby learners have to bring in even their other skills from other subjects to, to, to make the, the project a wholesome one. So when you are looking for 
when you are guiding learners to come up with good projects, look at the themes they have covered. For example, we have what called computer systems uh, as a theme. It has computer systems, introduction to ICT, and then hardware. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the detailed syllabus, you realize that in senior one term one, you are going to teach your learners these things of using ICT devices, camera, video, smartphone, and then you will also teach them the hardware, mm -hmm. uh, the keyboard and mouse, and even there is word processing. So you can give them a topic, uh, 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 you can give them a theme, for example, computer systems or data management, you can give, guide them with a theme and then tell them to come up with problems in that, uh, within that theme. Uh, which they can be able to solve. If learners come up, for example, they create a, a video about their school, maybe a documentary, they are using the knowledge they have learned in ICT systems and cameras and what, and then they edit it. And then uh, when they are narrating, they are using skills from English mm, on storytelling, they have done some research. So learners should be able to come up with that. And uh, someone who is asking, how do you relate with learning outcomes? The learning outcomes, are the ones which make up the topics and then the topics uh, make up the themes uh, which projects are based on. So that is one thing. Then the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, so even when you are looking at English, please English is also go ahead, look at what you have covered. Don't tell learners to do a calendar, which requires publisher when you have not, not taught them uh, this to publishing, which is senior three, you're telling learners and senior to do a calendar make it tell them to do uh, projects on what they have covered uh, on, on coverage um, because projects are part of us are summative assessment so that is the that then the other thing um, which I wanted to note I have I'm going to share these slides also I summarized the slides of NCDC in two seven slides at first the NCDC gave us um, over 30 slides but I summarized and some of the things that our colleagues have been talking about um, are in here. So I'm, I'm going to share them, uh, the, the summary which I made, I'm going to share them, their, their highlights. So what the teacher's role is, like Mr. Andrew told us, is to observe, converse, and guide, receive a product and a report, assess, score. So that is what you're supposed to do. You know, you're not supposed to be the one to tell learners what to do. Learners are supposed to come up with their own ideas. Then there are some theories here in the training that they gave us. Uh, we need to enter to them. We can get them through. The project plan is very important from the start. When, learner, when, when learners are starting the projects, it's better for them to do the planning. And uh, uh, Hilda told us about the phases. So in the first phase, there's a lot of planning there, the project title, all these, the budget, these things are important. So learners should submit a project plan first before they go ahead to implement. And then he, uh, Ms. Tandu told us about the evidence. Evidence is important. When learners are presenting their project, please record um, something. Like Gaza High School, they record their projects and they put them on their YouTube channel. It shows evidence of project work in the school. Take photos. If you cannot record videos, at least photos should be there as part of the report. Then the scoring. They have guided us with a detailed document. This is what NCDC had provided. But one thing I want to mention here as I, the last point I'm making here is this bullet, the last one here. This was my last slide. This bullet down here, that learners, I want just for emphasis to just get one person to read from this is the last statement. Um, I, uh, Learners will have a maximum of two projects every term, provided that by the time the learner sits for UNEB, a project in each of the subjects has been submitted. Now, many schools have not been doing giving projects right from senior one. So they are waking up in senior three, senior four to start giving projects. And you find that if the DOS does not coordinate this, you find that chemistry has told them to do projects. History has told them to do projects. Biology has told them to do projects. So you find that learners um, are, are bombarded. They are supposed to have meetings in the evening after classes to discuss their projects. And you realize that a learner has six subjects, all of them telling them to do a project. So uh, the guideline by NCDC was 
four terms those are eight projects so let us not let us let there be coordination let the dose uh, rogers yes mr Dumba. in the last 30 seconds you are not clear enough because someone was calling i think can yeah. you just repeat for us a little so what i was saying a clarion call is the dose should help make a schedule for project work don't let let departments not tell learners without coordination. Let the DOS make a schedule that uh, if mathematics can give a project can, can because um, some subjects may not be ready by first term. Like mathematics, may you want to give a project after learners have done maybe statistics so that they can do maybe some census and all that. So the DOS can say, okay, ICT. For you, you are even in this first topic, you can do runners can do projects. So ICT can give a project even in senior one term two, and maybe another subject. Then senior one term three, and maybe biology and another subject gives like that. So by senior three first term, all subjects have, have done a project. Then they can others can take a, a second round. The projects subjects can even give more than one project. Then at the end of the day. Um, uh, marks are going to be compiled. According to the guideline, projects are going to be also submitted to UNEP. 20%, uh, the 20% the will constitute of activity of integration and project work. So let there be, uh, Mr. Dumba, I want to end here. I know we have overshot. And um, I want to thank all the participants and uh, our facilitators for sharing. I think I can hand over to you, Mr. Dumba. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Roger Smokarere. I want to thank Andrew Kabuka and Hilda Nakazi. Thank you so much for enlightening us uh, about, about this project. And I hope this has helped everyone. So for the members of the ICT Teachers Association of Uganda, please inbox us. You can inbox Mokarere, you can inbox me and you talk about I mean, and you ask for what you think we should cover uh, next tuesday i want to send my special thanks to to mr wamono michael who is doing the graphics for us and also thank rogers mukalele uh or in brackets i want to thank shareability uganda so you can go to their website shareability.net uh they have been uh, very supportive for this program to to, to happen uh, secondly, yeah, we are sorry we don't have any more questions because we've gone beyond our time. But thank you so much, Rogers, and thank you so much, Mr. Wamono, uh, for doing whatever you people are doing for us. So let's catch up next Tuesday, Tuesday same time, 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, thank you once again, Andrew. Thank you, Hilda. Uh, good night, everyone.